hey guys welcome back to my channel today i'm here to finish our series on anatomy of larynx with the last topic on the list which is comparing the pediatric larynx and the adult larynx now there are loads of differences in between them so let's start ahead and i'm gonna end it with a very simple way to remember the differences between the pediatric and the adult larynx so let's start with it so our first point is about the position of the larynx You'll see that in a pediatric larynx, it is positioned higher up in the neck, almost at the level of glottis being opposite to C3 or C4 at rest. It reaches the C1 or C2 level during swallowing. Now, why is this high position so necessary? This high position basically allows the epiglottis to meet the soft palate and therefore it helps in making a nasopharyngeal channel for nasal breathing during suckling so what happens is the milk it the milk feed that the baby is receiving it passes separately over the dorsum of the tongue and the sides of epiglottis thus allowing the infant to breathe and feed simultaneously at the same time so you see why this is so very important to have the position higher up in the larynx uh, for all infants it is because the breathing and the feeding can go on simultaneously for this particular reason whereas in adult larynx you will be see is seeing that it is located lower in the neck at the level of c5 to c6 next let's look at the laryngeal cartilages in infants the laryngeal cartilages are very soft and they collapse very easily whereas in adults it's firm and it does not collapse easily when you see the epiglottis epiglottis is floppy and omega sh shaped in a pediatric larynx whereas it is firmer and flatter in an adult larynx next when you go to arytenoids the arytenoids they are relatively large in infants and it covers most of a significant amount of portion of the posterior glottis whereas in adults it is much smaller next we move on to the thyroid cartilage the thyroid cartilage is flatter in an infant and also what happens is it overlaps the cricoid cartilage and itself gets overlapped by the hyoid bone above because of this reason the cricothyroid and the thyrohyoid spaces become very narrow so uh, if you see from above downwards uh, this is the hyoid bone this is the thyroid cartilage and this is the cricoid cartilage so these spaces this is the thyrohyoid space and this is the cricothyroid space so what happens in infants is that uh, the cricoid cartilage is overlapping on the thyroid cartilage whereas the thyroid cartilage is overlapping on the hyoid bone so what happens is this two spaces they become very narrow and they're not very easily discernible as landmarks which is why it is extremely difficult to perform a tracheostomy in a pediatric patient because of these landmarks being not very easily discernible whereas we'll find that in adults the thyroid cartilage is much more angulated as you have already know there's something called the adam's apple uh, how how we all say males have the adam's apple it's because the two lamina of the thyroid cartilage are angled at a 90 degree to each other in case of uh, males whereas in females this angle is much more obtuse of about a 120 degree next coming to the shape of larynx the infant larynx is very small and it is conical in shape conical or funnel shape you could say whereas in uh, adult larynx it is much larger and it is cylindrical next point is very important over here uh, the narrowest portion in the whole of the larynx is the subglottis in case of infants this is very important point to consider during the selection of the pediatric endotracheal tube whereas the this level is different in case of adults in case of adults the narrowest level is at the level of the vocal cords next we move on to the size of the vocal cords in female in case of infants the, it is about 6 mm in females and 8 mm in males 
whereas in adults it is 15 to 19 mm in females and 17 to 23 mm in males next when we come to the vocal fold structure the vocal fold structure i have described all the layers of the vocal folds the five layers that make up the vocal folds in a previous video where i've spoken about its histology so you'll see that the vocal fold structure is very immature in case of children whereas it is mature with five layers in adults next coming to the mucosa mucosa lining the mucosa lining in infants it's very reactive and it easily undergoes edematous change with trauma or inflammation therefore leading to more obstruction whereas in adults the mucosa is less reactive so it is lesser prone to getting spasms and last point of it all is the vocal cords the membranous to cartilage ratio in infants it is 1 is to 1.5 ratio whereas in adults it is 1 is to 5 ratio so this completes all the differences between the adult and the pediatric larynx so one more thing you need to know about how the growth of pediatric or infant larynx happens you will see that it has two spurts in growth the first spurt occurs in the first 3 years of life when the larynx is growing in width and in length and thus it obviates the need for any airway surgery in certain congenital anomalies like for instance say laryngomalacia in cases of laryngomalacia we do not need to do immediate surgery rather we need to do uh, we need to reassure the patient's uh, families and also look out for another few years of growth to occur and then the issue resolves all by itself and the second spurt of growth it occurs during adolescence when the thyroid angle starts developing the length of vocal cord then increases leading to all the voice changes which happens during puberty and also with the growth of the neck the larynx gradually descends down to the level of the adults which is about c5 to c6 so in this picture if you see you'll see that uh, in an adult the child's uh, tongue is much more larger in proportion to the mouth whereas in adults it's not the same case in infants you'll see that the epiglottis is floppier and u shaped whereas in adults it's short up and the vocal cords it has an upward slant in children and it but it is more horizontal in case of adults the cricoid that being the narrowest part of the child's airway and also the trachea will be narrow and much less rigid in infants and also last one thing is that the larynx is more anteriorly and more superiorly placed in case of children so now a very easy way to remember this is the seven s's so you need to remember the seven s to the uh, to remember the differences between adult and pediatric larynx so the first point is the size it is much smaller in infants next we move on to shape it is conical or funnel shaped in infants and cylindrical in adults third is the softness the cartilages are much softer in infants fourth is that it is superiorly placed in infants fifth s is that it is straighter and less oblique than in adults sixth one is that the sensitivity is greater in infants uh, the mucosal sensitivity which therefore leads uh, leads to it being more prone to getting spasms leading to obstructions and last of all the last s is that the subglottis is the narrowest portion in infants so these are the seven s you need to remember to learn the differences between the adult and the pediatric larynx thank you for watching see you in my next video